So this is a long-standing debate uh, here in Israel. House demolitions were actually stopped years ago because the IDF had adopted analysis and, and conclusions that they don't actually deter terrorists, but they were renewed. Uh, in 2014, after the kidnapping and murder of uh, those three teenagers in the West Bank. So here's the question I'm going to pose all three of you. Are house demolitions a form of deterrence or collective punishment? I'll start with you, Dr. Shen. There's three ways of, of uh, assessing house demolitions, and, and it fails in all three. Um, as an act of war, it doesn't really seem to accomplish anything. It doesn't deprive the enemy of any uh, capacity. It doesn't re reduce its morale. It doesn't actually uh, do anything to advance any military interest. As a form of criminal justice, it's particularly appalling. It's destroying the private property of someone who has not been convicted anything because they haven't been charged with anything. Um, in this case, uh, the crime is being the parent or the family member of somebody who has done something. Nobody here has been accused of anything. Nobody's been charged. Nobody's con been convicted, and yet a punishment has happened. I think we would find this appalling in, in any other context. And thirdly, as an act of deterrence, there's not a debate. It's been assessed. It's been studied. The numbers have been crunched. It is entirely ineffective. Yeah. So neither as an act of war, nor as an act of criminal justice, nor as an act of deterrence, is this practice in any way defensible. I'm just in total agreement with everybody today. Uh, it's completely out of character. No, but I was going to, if you'd started with me, what I was going to say, just to pick up on the last point, the first point of analysis that I would go to would be, is it an effective deterrent? Mm. And it's not. It's not. It's not. Mm -hmm. And it's, um, again, you know, we're into that moral zone. Why are we doing these things? What do they accomplish? Mm -hmm. Are they right, wrong? And we shouldn't be doing it. Okay. Uri? Uh, of course, the, the simple answer would be yeah. no. Right. I, look. First of all, remember the, the, the uh, item we, we started with, you know, the uh, prevention of uh, family members of Hamas to get into hospitals. Here we're talking about, uh, yeah. we're not talking about the, the actual person. Mm -hmm. He's either in prison or, or uh, killed in, in action, usually, uh, by doing, uh, committing his uh, terrorist uh, attack. Um, we're talking about the family of the terrorist. Mm. So, you know, it's a cruel punishment. One can not think of a similar thing in, a, in, in, you know, in, in proper Israel, and also... Why is this government doing it then? I think it's, it's a populist, uh, populistic ste step. Mm -hmm. You heard that the uh, Minister of Defense promised the family to do it as kind of a, 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 a biblical vengeance. I want to show you exactly uh, what he said. Vengeance. I'll show you exactly what he said. We're going to put it on the screen. He, says, uh, he said today, he tweeted, During the Shiva, the period of mourning for Yotam Ovadia in the community of Adam, I told his widow and parents that we would soon demolish the terrorist home. Uh, tonight, that circle has been closed. We will continue fighting terror with an iron fist. We will continue building in Adam and in any other place where our citizens are being targeted. What do you think about what when he says the circle has been closed, I mean, it's certainly not closed before for the family. Yeah. Before what? Before, before we get to the, what he actually said, we have to remember, and, and many of our viewers don't know that, Mr. Lieberman, as the Minister of Defense of Israel, is in his own per, <laughs> sole person, yeah. is the uh, government of the occupied territories. Right. He's the lawmaker, he's the executor, he's doing everything by his position as the Minister of Defense because the West Bank is under military occupation. We keep forgetting that. We keep uh, uh, saying, you know, it's, it's, you know, the government tries to say it's part of Israel. No, okay. and, he's, and that's the, the only reason it can be done. It can't be done in proper Israel, only there, uh, because he decided to. But I want to ask my, uh, the legal experts here, uh, the High Court of Justice throughout the whole, this whole period, over the years, has consistently upheld demolitions of, uh, of terrorists' uh, homes. So it's legal. You want to take that one? No, I mean, I think that the High Court is mistaken in this case. I'm not sure what the legal grounds are. I'm particularly surprised that it's upheld demolitions, not that it's relevant for this case in East Jerusalem. In East Jerusalem? Yeah. What, what does it matter? Because, it because there's a big difference. And next to Israel. Yeah, because there's a big difference. I know difference. it's next to Israel, but what does because it matter where? The, pre the pretense of the, army, of the army maintaining an occupation is lost because there we claim that it's not an occupation. Right. Well, do you see, uh, for example, this happening uh, to the homes of Jewish terrorists? We, we know that, that there was an appeal to the Supreme Court mm -hmm. uh, demanding the uh, uh, regional commander uh, with settlers, settlers who live outside the uh, boundaries of uh, proper Israel, live in the occupied territories in what they call uh, uh, Judea and Samaria. Mm -hmm. and, and the court, by the way, a settler uh, judge uh, wrote the, uh, uh, the ruling, said uh, it, it hasn't been proved that it's a deterrent uh, for uh, Jews and therefore it, uh, uh, the, the, there's no reason to do that. But right. again, it was proved by the military itself. It's not a deterrent for Palestinians either. So why do you do it there? 
And what, you're going to say something about the the the, the, the minister saying that the, it, it's a closing the circle that you had comments Again, about it's it's a kind of a vengeance in in in. Uh, I, I, I really, my heart goes to the family, yeah. and I understand why the family would, would demand the worst things we can imagine for the family, perhaps of the uh, uh, of of the 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 murderer of their right. uh, loved ones. But that shouldn't be, um, uh, you know, we're in a, a, a law-abiding democracy. It shouldn't be a, a How factor. How should they be yeah, deterred? No, no tragedies have ever been written about uh, people who uh, get lost in the pursuit of, of, of honor. Right. So how should they be, ter be deterred, Vivian, these people? How can they be deterred? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I think that the only way that they can be deterred is if they feel that they have some kind of uh, political dignity and future. What do you mean? Well, I mean I that... an agreement. I know, it's crazy. <laughs> um, you can't, I mean, either you, you, you sort of look at the situation, you say that these people are inherently criminal, mm -hmm. because there are a lot of people doing these kinds, conducting these kinds of acts, engaging in terrorism, mm -hmm. and it is somewhat normalized and celebrated in the society. So you have to look very hard at why is that happening. Right. So either you have a pathological streak in the society, mm -hmm or you have a very, very, very deep political, social, economic issue slash problem. I tend to think it's the latter. Most people are deterred from carrying out terrorist acts because they know they won't make it out alive. That deters about 90-something percent of the potential terrorists. These ones are the ones who we didn't successfully deter. There are a lot of them. A lot of them. Yeah. yeah I mean, it's not, yeah. 